Zebulon. long. Okay. And without further ado, I want to get right into it. Um, because <clears throat> the tribe of Issachar, being the so-called Mexicans, the Aztecs today, as well as the tribe of Zebulon, dealing with the uh, people of Guatemala, all the way down to Panama, dealing with the Mayan Indians. These are people that are part of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. They're part of uh, the indigenous people of those lands. All right, and even uh, even some that are scattered <clears throat> because they because the Aztecs did own part of North. Uh, my bad, not North America. We are part of of North America from Texas to New Mexico, all the way up to uh, California. All right, so those indigenous peoples of those particular lands from from there all the way down to Meso Central America are part of the twelve tribes. On these particular tribes, in, in, in particular. Now let's let me go ahead and get go go ahead and go right into it. Um, let's go ahead and go into this, the uh, Genesis forty nine. Go ahead and go to Genesis forty nine, and let's go ahead go to verse thirteen. Genesis forty nine, verse thirteen. All right, and this is dealing with Jacob giving his his sons. The twelve patriarchs, the uh, their the prophecy of what will be befall upon their children in the last days, which we're in right now. Um, Genesis forty nine and thirteen. Zebulon shall dwell at the haven of the sea, and he shall be for a haven of ships, and his border shall be unto Zidon. So it says Zebulon, right? Which Zebulon means to be exalted, shall dwell at the haven of the sea. All right. So right there. It's talking, what that's talking about is the Panama Canal, all right? Because Zebulon dealing with the so-called Mayan, Mayan Indians, the, the indigenous brothers and sisters from Guatemala all the, way to down, all the way down to Panama, all right? It's dealing with the Panama Canal, all right? Which is a large export. It's a canal, which is a, which is a, a pathway from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. All right. And there's a lot of uh, shipping business, a lot of maritime business that's done over there. All right. And it says he shall be for a haven of ships. He shall be for a haven of ships. OK. A lot of trading business. And we're in the, up in the northern uh, northern part of the, of the earth dealing with the uh, north country, like like it says in Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, which we're in right now. Um, but also too that that uh, being right in North America, uh, North not Slocky, not North America, Mesoamerica or Central America, I should say, that little pathway being being right there. Okay, so shall be a haven of, haven of ships, haven haven for a a, um, a plethora or a multitude of shipping and maritime business. All right. And his border shall be unto Zidon. And that's in his border shall be unto Zidon. Is dealing with historically Zebulon, or being right when right during the time of Joshua when we were conquering all these Hamitic Canaanite nations and pushing them out. We were pushing them uh, the Canaanites out, and we were going in. and And when you look at the uh, a traditional map of of the twelve uh, Slakia, the twelve tribes land allotment. Zeb Zebulon's uh, land was right next to the border of Zidon, all right, Tyre and Zidon, okay? Now, with that, let's go ahead and get this book right here, okay? And I'm going to go into a little bit of history uh, in a couple moments dealing with the tribe of Zebulon, dealing with the Panama Canal because it's very important. It was established... Actually, let's go ahead. Let me just go ahead and pull this out, and I'm gonna talk about the Panama Canal um, in particular. Now, this is the book from Columbus to Castro. All right. Now I'm gonna go to page 400. Let me go ahead and skip all the way to the point. Let me go ahead and go to Panama uh, Slakia, then look at the Panama Canal. And page 422 from Columbus to Castro, the, dealing with this book. Page 42. I'm going to skip down to the one, two, three, fourth paragraph. The international policeman carried a big stick. His was the duty, as the, uh, President Toff wrote to Secretary Knox in 1909, to have the right 
to knock their heads together until they should maintain peace between them. As stated, Frank, frankly, by Roosevelt himself in 1908, with reverence, uh, my bad, with reference to Venezuela, America had to show these do dogos that they will have to behave decently. So, so Roosevelt just took the Panama Canal while the Congress and the South Americans debated the issue. As Roosevelt himself wrote to Cecil Spring Rice of British Foreign Offices in 1904. So this is, so what I'm about to read next is them being, uh, you know, having this conference or having a um, collaboration to have this thing built in 1904. This is what I'm going to read next. Verse, uh, well, not verse, Slaki. It was a good thing for Egypt and the Sudan and for the world when England took Egypt and the Sudan. It is a good thing for India that England, England should control it. And so it is a good thing, all right? So this is uh, Roosevelt speaking. And it is a good thing, a, Slaki, a good thing, a very good thing for Cuba and for Panama and for the world that the United States has acted as it has actually done during the last six years. The people of the United States and the people of the Eastmas, speaking of the people of the Central America, that's where the Eastmas is at, and the rest of mankind will be, Slaki will be all, Slaki will all be the better because we dig the Panama Canal and keep order in its neighborhood. And the politicians and revolutionists at both uh, Bogot, Bogota are entitled to precisely the amount of sympathy we extend to other in, inefficient bandits. Okay, so this is in 1904, them going up and digging up the Panama Canal, which is later on being established, I believe, in 1915. You know what I'm saying? Full, being fully established in 1915. Now it's that powerful maritime business. Now, dealing with that, um, you deal when now you deal since not centuries later, uh, decades later, you deal with uh, Norega Mel. I believe his name is Mel Norega. Norega, all right, which was set up as uh, he was set up as a CIA operative to govern the country of uh, Panama. Okay, he was set up to govern that country. Now, this same man dealing with Norega. He he ended up becoming, general, uh, I believe, a decade later, from uh, from being <clears throat> a government shield, if you will, to being a a key a key uh, a key nationalist for the people of Panama. Okay, he didn't be he he wasn't uh, the so-called white man's or America's um, uh, pretty much whipping boy or yes man. He ended up becoming nationalistic for his people and setting up certain um and because here's the thing when you deal and this is something that you have to watch with the dealing with the panama deception america was shipping in a lot of drugs in the panama they were um going in there illegally um and disrupting the population or through him but also too through their uh operatives their secrets uh, their secret uh operatives that they had stationed over there pushing drugs, pushing a lot of different um, things like weapons. They were having a lot of, uh, they were doing a lot of wicked acts and a lot of shady things over there. Now, Norega and his people, and his, uh, his particular, um, his cabinet and his people, they were doing, they ended up uh, becoming more rogue against America and becoming more nationalistic for their pe for the people dealing with the dealing with Panama, okay? And this is something that's very key in history, all right? You know what I'm saying? Dealing with uh, what happened down there in Mesoamerica, as well as one of the one of the countless of things that America has done to, um, in particular, our people. I mean, obviously, things that they've done through through the planet Earth. But you have to watch the Panama deception to understand that full breakdown because they came in and conquer they ended up because they were they signed a, a treaty or not a treaty but an agreement where if panama cannot um 
if, if Panama cannot protect its protect the Panama Canal, the U.S. can come in and just take it over. Okay, and they illegally came in there with no. What they did was they set up Mel Norega because he was be, he was becoming uh, more of, you know more dependent in being sovereign for for his own people in his own land that they were going in and they were painting him to be the villain. He, you know, like they always do, just like how they did Hitler, just like how they did many different people in, in history, um, paint him the villain, that he's a drug lord, he's all this, that, and the third. Although they were secretly behind the scenes orchestrating everything that was going on over there. And that and that gave them reason and to go, go over there to uh, eventually arrest Nodega and take over his, um, take over that, the government as a as a whole bring their troops in to civilians and attack uh go in and test laser weapons new targeting systems you know being used on the public killing men women and children young men uh young innocent men women and children okay so that's that's the history on that in a brief sentence now you know what i'm saying that's one that's one of those things that happened dealing with the Panama Canal, and this is something that's prophet that's um, that Panama Canal is, is a big prophecy to understanding who the tribe of Zebulon is, which are the so-called people, which are the people of the uh, from Guatemala to Panama, okay? And America ended up taking over Panama, and now that's this you know that's one of their um, provinces in um, in, in modern day times, okay? So. With that said, let's go ahead and go into Deuteronomy the 33rd chapter. Alright, this is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 18. Alright. Um, <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 18. And Zebulon, he said, Rejoice Zebulon in thy going out, and Issachar in thy tents. All right, and this is and and this is dealing with the blessings that Issachar and Zebulon would have. All right, and going go out in thy tents, they shall call the people unto the mountain. So Issachar would call Zebulon in in those in that particular time dealing with the Aztecs and dealing with the Mayans. All right, the Aztecs would call the Mayans up. They shall call the people unto the mountain. There they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness. For they shall suck of the abundance of the seas and of the treasures hid in the sands. So this is speaking on in the times, in the so-called Middle Ages and whatnot. The Aztecs and the Mayans, all right, would would, uh, would would come together, and the Aztecs would call up the Mayans. Okay, they would call up the Mayans to celebrate feasts of righteousness. Okay, and and that's and they were because they, because they were both at one point celebrating feasts of righteousness, like celebrating uh, the Day of Atonement, which not that's not a feast day, but like the Feast of Tabernacles, things that were pertaining to the laws uh, in um, in Leviticus and in different ceremonial laws that our people our people in Israel were celebrating, and that's so that that's what was going on now. The part in verse uh, Deuteronomy 33 and 19 where it says, "They there they shall suck, for they shall suck, uh, um, yeah, so for they shall suck of the abundance of the seas and of the treasures hid in the sand. That's talking about the amount of different um, mineral, amount of different uh, beautiful treasures that's amongst throughout, all throughout Mesoamerica or Central America, whichever one you want to call it. Dealing with diamonds, rubies, gold, silver, uh, torquils, uh, tor torquoise, um, rocks, stones, um, pearls, rubies, emeralds. A lot of different uh, things that are hid in, in the sand, like it says, in that particular region. Okay. Um, now, let's, now, let's go ahead and go into Jose... Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and go into the book of the Apocrypha, which Apocrypha is a part of 1611, of course. But let's go ahead and go into the Apocrypha. Let's go ahead and go into 2nd Ezra um, 13 in this particular lesson because it said that they, were, they wanted to uh, 
they wanted to go to a land, for a further land where never mankind dwelt, they better best keep their laws. Now, with that said, now with that said, Second Ezra thirteen and forty, those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, whom Solomon answered, the king of Assyria led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, so they came into another land. So dealing with the ten tribes, dealing with in the modern day times, we know as the indigenous people of North, Central, and South America, the Native Americans, the Latinos. All right. As I continue, verse 41. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a country, uh, go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they may keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land, because at that time they were going off in the idolatry. Okay. And they weren't keeping the law, statutes, and the commands to the best of their ability. Here in Deuteronomy, the third, third chapter, they were. That's where they. That's why they came to their to this land. The ten tribes, the northern kingdom, came over here to the to to the Americas to further to keep the laws to the best of their ability that they weren't keeping during the time of Assyria, during the time of uh, the king, the wicked, the wicked rulers of the northern kingdom at that particular time. So let's keep reading. That they might keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land. All right, and they entered into the U, into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. Okay, so this is land, the land unknown, basically a, a land where never mankind dwelt. Verse forty-three. They entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them, and held still the flood till they were passed over. For, the, for through that country there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half, and that same region is called Asherah. Asherah is America. Just if you go watch the uh, Tribe of Gad breakdown, I've, I've already cut, covered through the uh, Asherah being America. Okay, so this is, this is dealing with this. So I'm bringing this out. Actually, I'm going to finish for, uh, verse 46. Then dwelt they there until the latter time, now when they shall begin to come. We're in the, we're in the latter days right now, so... That this was established, so I'm establishing that they came over here, the uh, tribe of Zebulon, the so-called Mayans and Guatemalans, all the way down to Panama. You know, the people of that that region, as well as the so-called Mexicans, Aztecs, were all were amongst the ten tribes that came over here to best keep their laws to the best of ability and keep the sacrificial laws and keep the the uh, feast days. Okay, Just like it's recorded in Deuteronomy 33rd, 33rd chapter. And uh, the 18th verse. Why do you wish to sail west? To open a new route to Asia. Asia is the richest kingdom, the land of spices and gold. At the moment, there are only two ways of reaching it. By sea, sailing around the African continent. The journey takes a year or by land, but the Turks have closed this road to all Christians. There is a third way. By sailing west across the ocean sea. The distance is unknown. It's said to be infinite. Superstition. I believe the Indies are no more than 750 leagues west of the Canary Islands. How can you be so certain? The calculations of uh, Toscanelli, Marin de Tire, Esdras. Esdras is a Jew. So what's worse? Two minutes, and already you're a bad man. For telling the truth? Yes. We are burning people for less. The men you're about to confront have no emotion. No. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and go into Hosea the 8th eight, eight chapter, okay? Because one thing, you know, we as Israelites have to understand is that the reason why we're in captivity and we're going through curses and bond, bondage like we are now, and even when, when uh, this country, America, and uh, the conquest of Central and South America was made was because of us breaking the law, statutes, and commandments. Okay, we have to always remember that. Okay, 
So, with that said, let's get a Hosea 8 and 13. They sacrifice flesh for the sacrifices of my offerings and eat it. Okay, so this right here in Hosea the 8th chapter, this is talking about, this right here in particular is speaking on dealing with the, uh, the indigenous tribes of North, Central, and South America. In particular, you do your research, you deal with um, primarily, I would say, because you had the Carib Indians, you had some other Indians, indigenous people of that time that were doing, that were partaking like the Tupi Indians down in Brazil, that were partaking in um, cannibalistic, uh, cannibalistic uh, practices. But the Aztecs and the Mayans were primarily, were the, are the uh, primary and most known people for doing this. Okay, so I'm gonna read this again, just like how in Deuteronomy the third third chapter, they came over here to best keep the sacrifice and, and made sacrifices of righteousness and keep their laws, statutes and commandments to the best of ability, according to second second Ezra's thirteenth chapter, the forty first, forty verse all the way down to forty fifth verse. This is uh, that's what they originally came to do, but then they started going back off in the wickedness. Every last one of the ten tribes from North, Central, and South America, so they started. Sacrifice of flesh, of, uh, of sacrif making sacrifices of flesh to the Lord. So let's let me read this again. Hosea eight and thirteen. They sacrifice flesh for the sacrifices of my offering, and eat it. But the Lord accepted them not. Okay, so the Lord did not accept them. Now will He remember their iniquity and visit their sins? They shall return to Egypt. And it says they shall return to Egypt, which means that they shall, shall uh, return to bondage. Okay, this is dealing with, uh, when you deal with uh, the book of Hosea, this is talking about the different judgments that the ten tribes, because dealing with uh, Ephraim and Sumerians, Ephraim's the head tribe of the northern kingdom, but it represents Ephraim, whenever you see Ephraim and, Manes or Ephraim and Samaria being referenced, it combines the whole northern kingdom. In, the, in this in particular this particular chapter all right or this particular book dealing with Jose who deals with the northern kingdom's judgment primarily also to um, you know in other scriptures as well but that's why we returned into slavery because we were making the Aztecs and the Mayans the what you know as the so-called Mexicans and the people of Guatemala all the way down to Panama the people of Honduras uh, Costa Rica and uh, other places um, down there, um, was, was the other place, uh, Nicaragua, you know what I'm saying? Different, those different places down there, they were, they were partaking in this wickedness. Okay. So we were put back in the bondage and slavery. Shalom. So I want to touch on real briefly dealing with the pyramids from, uh, in Mesoamerica or Central America. All right. Now this book, <clears throat> the, a pretty good book, you know what I'm saying, dealing with the history of uh, Mayas, Aztecs, and Incas. It's called Ancient, uh, Great, A Great Ages of Man, uh, Ancient America, all right? Now this is on page 43. Race of Master Builders, all right? Because I want to also prove, you know, this also tying in the fact that these people, you know, dealing with the Mexicans, the Aztecs, uh, Mayans, they're Hebrew Israelites, Mexicans, uh, people, so-called Mexicans and people from Guatemala to Panama. Those people are Israelites from the tribe of uh, Issachar and the tribe of Zebulon. All right. So I want to uh, read this. A math, race of master builders because they built pyramids, a whole uh, a hell host of uh, pyramids all the way down through all throughout Central uh, America, as well as there's some in South America as well. You know what I'm saying? But focusing on this breakdown on the uh, two tribes that I'm breaking down. A race of master builders. Building monuments was a religion uh, for the ancient Maya. Spurred by their priests, the mysterious people raised majestic stones, stone cities to their gods. At least 80 major Mayas, Maya cities, some with temples more than 200 feet high, still dot the landscape of middle america the ear earliest of these cities began to flourish in the third century in the tangled rainforest of guatemala the last great ones were built in the 10th and 11th centuries 
in the plains of north northern Utica, Yucatan. Much about the culture they represent still puzzles archaeologists, but they stand today as one of the most varied and sophisticated archaeological records in history. And you know why that is? Is because people from uh, the indigenous brothers and sisters from Central America are Israelites. Why? Because they, they were in Egypt at one point, just like um, how I read before that uh, our people would go back into Egypt and go back in Egypt, going back in bondage. The, uh, the tribe of Zebulon dealing with the so-called Mayans, Mayan Indians, and the Aztecs dealing with uh, Aztec Indians um, of the tribe of Issachar. They were part. Of, they took part in that slavery because they're part of the twelve tribes of Israel who were in captivity in Egypt. Okay, and they were great builders. And they built great pyramids. These these pyramids are even better than the ones in Egypt that the twelve tribes built in Egypt. Okay, so I'm gonna show some pictures. Okay, it's Teo, uh, Teo Tihuac and a pyramid city of gods that dominated middle, middle American culture for more than 300 years. All right, the Pyramid of the Sun, the most imposing monument of, in all of ancient America, rises 213 feet above the arid plains of Teo Tihuac and priests once climbed its steps to a temple at the peak. Look at look at that temp. Look at this uh, pyramid right here. Mm -hmm. Um, this I guess these steps right here are are ones for Quasicuoto, which Quasicuoto, you know, maybe I have to go revisit that break now. Um, that you know we have here at at Sakari dealing with uh, Quasicuoto, dealing with the uh, pyramids and whatnot. Um. Quasicuoto was who you know as Jesus Christ or Yahweh Shah who appeared to the northern kingdom over here. All right. As the flying feathery servant. Okay. Obviously see the pre uh, precipitous uh, staircase flanked by stone snake heads ascends the temple of Quasicuoto, the ancient uh, Mexican's serpent god. Large carved panels from the slopping side of its pyramid. Okay. <coughs> You know, so <laughs> I'm just reading certain inserts. Um, Tilka, the great Maya city uh, and o oasis of civil civilization amid the jungles of Guatemala. Okay. This one right here, this pyramid right here, uh, a soaring pyramid being restored by University of Pen Pennsylvania scholars forms a hundred foot high platform for Tickle's uh, temple of the giant jaguar. See that? So I'm just showing some pictures real quick um, of this. You know, this is uh, another pyramid in, in uh, that the Mayans built. You know, they're all pyramids. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, we know that Egypt built pyramids, so everything just Everything just links up all together. You know what I'm saying? We're dealing with our people being being over here being one of the 12 tribes. So let's go ahead and go into the scriptures. Let's go ahead and go to Exodus 1 and 11. <clears throat> so yeah, I want to touch on... I also want to uh, bring this scripture out. It's like... So I'm gonna bring this scripture out in Exodus 1 and 11. Okay. I'm gonna start at verse 10. Actually, start at verse 9. <laughs> so Exodus chapter 1, verse 9, and he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies. And fight against us and so get them up out of the land so just giving you an understanding and context that this is speaking of the children of israel and slavery under the egyptians right so i'm gonna keep reading all right verse 11 therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens and they built for pharaoh treasure cities python and ramses 
So you deal with Python and Ramses. These were uh, pyramids and temples that were built. Pyramids, you know what I'm saying, in particular, that were built. All right. They were named them Python and Ramses. All right. Treasure cities and whatnot. <clears throat> okay. So let's go ahead and go into another reference dealing with the time of the Maccabees. You know what I'm saying? Because there was... There wasn't just, um, so, because somebody could say, oh, well, there's pyramids around the world. Well, guess what? The children of Israel were scattered throughout the four corners. So, of course, if we see that there's pyramids being built in certain areas, then those areas would have to be inhabited by people that descend from the 12 tribes of Israel through their line of their father. Let's go ahead and get this. Maccabees, thir uh, first, Maccabees chapter 13 and uh, 32. First Maccabees chapter 13 verse Slaki. Yeah, 22, my bad, Aki. So uh, first Maccabees chapter 13 verse 22. Wherefore Tryphon made ready all his horsemen to come that night, but there fell a great snow by reasoning whereof he came not. So he departed and came into the country of Galad. And when he came near to Baskama, he slew Jonathan who buried there who was buried there. After Trifon returned and went into his own land, then sent Simon and took the bones of Jonathan, this dealing with the Maccabee brothers of the tribe of Levi, his brother, and buried them in Modin in the cities of his father. And all of Israel made great lamentation for him and bewailed him many days. Simon also built a monument upon the sepulchre of his fathers and his brethren and raised it aloft to the site with hewn stone behind and before. All right, so this, this is the point right here, verse 28. Moreover, he set up seven pyramids, one against another for his father and his mother and his four brethren. Let's read that again. Moreover, he set up seven pyramids, one against another for his father and his mother and for his brethren. So that's proven right there that this was an Israelite custom and culture to build its pyramids going back to the time of Egypt when we were building pyramids for the Egyptians. So what does that conclude that the uh, Mayans and Aztecs and all the people of South uh, Central and South America are Israelites because they built uh, pyramids and guess what their forefathers from the 12 tribes built pyramids. Just to give you an edification on that. Deuteronomy the 28th chapter. Okay. Because I want to also break down one of the curses, one of the clear curses dealing with our so-called Latino brothers, so-called Hispanic Latino brothers, all right, and sisters, that they speak a particular language uh, dealing with Spanish, dealing with the Latin tongue that they weren't speaking before, okay? This is a language that they were not speak, uh, speaking prior to pre-colonial, uh, pre-Columbus um, days. They were speaking with... A lot of people from the Michigan movement would call, um, what do they call it, uh, Nahuatl, all right? That that go, that really is what, uh, what we would call Paleo-Hebrew, that particular language of people are from, from Mesoamerica or Central America. That was originally Paleo-Hebrew, because when you deal with certain words like Mayan, that goes back to the Paleo-Hebrew. When you deal with uh, Mexico or Mexico or Michigan, what they'll say is not, they'll correct you and be like, it's not Mexico, it's not Mexican, it's Michigan, it's Michica, all right? It goes back to Mashayak, which, is, which means anointed, which is the name of who people call Jesus Christ. We know, as, know his real name in the Paleo-Hebrew as Yehawashai, which means deliverer, Mashayak means anointed, all right? Or he del or Yahushua means he delivers or he saves, and Mashiach means anointed. Okay, so they all these little uh, words or what they call Nawat. All right, that's Paleo Hebrew. That's Paleo Hebrew. Okay, because yeah, that's what they were speaking. They were Israelites. We're gonna further prove that later on. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and go into Deuteronomy the twenty-eighth chapter. Okay. Um, this is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness 
and in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he had destroyed thee. So this yoke of iron, you know what I'm saying, this prior, this is dealing with bondage, this is dealing with slavery. When you deal with the so-called Negroes, that's what happened. You know what I'm saying? Go look, type it up on Google, yoke of iron, you're going to see a yoke of iron on their neck dealing with the so-called uh, Negroes of, of being in slavery. But it also, it also can be referenced with all the other tribes because Deuteronomy 20 chapters dealing with everybody's uh, judgment, you know? everybody, uh, all the 12 tribes uh, enslavement, okay? With that, now with that, let me go ahead and keep reading, all right? Because some of the uh, people of Panama and Mexico were sent to Spain as slaves to walk naked in front of the Spaniards, okay? And they were put in slavery while they were over here, while, while the conquistadors came over here, like guys like Pedro, well, I'm going to keep reading, okay? Verse 49, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from a, from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle fly, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. All right. So it's a tongue. So this is a nation whose tongue shalt thou shalt not understand, and it's a nation from from afar, in the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle. This also is in reference to the Judah, so-called Negroes being um, taken into captivity. All right. Um, of whose nation's tongue that you want to understand, but this um, and obviously you deal with different captivities like the Roman Empire, the Greek Empire. They had the eagle on their symbols. Hell, all the uh, Europeans came when they came, the English, the Dutch, and whatnot. They all have the uh, the eagle as their symbol. But guess who else has the eagle on their symbol? Spain does. And guess what? The Spaniards dealing with the dealing not only dealing with the Spanish Inquisition. All right, that came over here to the Caribbean islands, but also to dealing with the Spaniards that came, the Span Spanish conquistadors in the 1500s that came over here and conquered everybody from the Aztecs, Mayans, and Incas. Okay, and that's why they're speaking Spanish now. Okay, so that's that's one of the curses. All right. So with that said, let's go ahead and go back to Hosea uh, seven and one to further establish that. Okay, because you had guys of that particular. Uh, conquest, because conquistador means conquest. Um, go over there and do what did what they did, and uh, you had guys like Pedro de Al Alvarado, and you also had uh, Hernan and Cortez that did the things that they did to our people. All right, our brothers and sisters down there. Now I'm gonna read a scripture and I'm gonna read a reference. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go into a scripture back, going back in the Hosea seven and one. Um, dealing with the conquests, all right, dealing with the robbers, dealing with the per people that spoiled our people, all right. And I'm going to bring out some references, too, out of this book, American Holocaust. But let's, let me go ahead and get this. This is Hosea uh, 7 and 1. When I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered. So the iniquity of Ephraim is speaking of the northern tribes from Simeon all the way down to Issachar. Okay, so this is all the northern kingdom, but I'm focusing on the Mayans and Aztecs, the uh, Zebulon and Issachar. Okay, the so-called Mexicans, the so-called uh, people of Guatemala, Guatemala to Panama. All right. Um, when I would have healed, e uh, when I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered, and the iniquity and the wickedness of Samaria, for they committed falsehood, and the thief cometh in the troop of and the troop of robbers spoiled without. Okay, and that troop of robbers is talking about the conquistadors, man, dealing with the tribe of Zebulon and the tribe of Issachar. All right, and you have guys like Hernan Cortez, you had guys like uh, Pedro de Alvarado, you had different people of that particular conquest going in and doing what they did to that mind of mines and Aztecs. Okay. And, and committing uh, genocide as well as enslavement and robbing them of the land and the resources. Okay. With that said, let me go ahead and get this real quick. It's American Holocaust by David E. St uh, Stoner. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get. I'm going to get some um, numbers. 
all right, dealing with uh, the, some of the things that they've done. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm actually gonna go a, a quick. Uh, just give you an estimate of what happened to him. Verse ninety. I mean, not verse. Page 94, 95, by the, uh, by the time the 16th century had ended, perhaps 200,000 Spaniards had moved their lives to the Indian, uh, to the Indies, to Mexico, to Central America, and, point, uh, and points further to the south. In contrast, uh, in contrast, by that time, somewhere between 60 million and 80 million natives from those lands were dead. Even, in, even then, the carnage was not over. Okay, so by that time when the con conquest was in, at its peak, or in its plateau, or in its middle stages, um, you had 60 million to 80 million people that was killed in, in those lands. Okay, so this is just lining up with the scriptures. Um, let me go ahead and go into some more. Uh, And go ahead and go into some more, a couple more uh, references real quick. Okay, this is page, I'm going to get this, this is page 60, uh, 76, dealing with the troop, uh, the, uh, the troop of robbers who spoiled without, all right? <laughs> Let me read that, read this again so you can have a clear, a clear understanding that this verse is this particular verse is speaking on our Northern Kingdom brothers, dealing with you uh, so-called Hispanics and from from uh, Central America. Hosea 71, and I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered and the wickedness of, of Samaria. For they committed falsehood, and the thief cometh in, and the troop of robbers spoiled without. Speaking of the conquistadors, all right? So with that said, let me read this. Page 76, in this case, therefore, uh, therefore, not only was there no reason for Montezuma to suppose Cortez intended to launch an invasion, the uh, Tocatec troops who accompanied him could have been part of an effort to seek political alliance, but Cortez had plainly announced in, in advance that his purpose uh, were not warlike, that he came as an ambassador of peace all right once the spanish were inside the city gates however it soon became apparent that this was far from consolatory uh, mission in the midst of a great public celebration of the feast of the god of uh hot hot so like, yeah, i can't pronounce it the spanish led by the court by cortez ruthless Lieutenant Pedro del Alvarado entered and surrounded the ceremonial arena. It was filled and recalled the 16th century Spanish historian Bar uh, uh, Bernardino del Sa Sa Sagan with nobles, priests, and soldiers and, th and throngs of other people still unaware of the conquistadors' attentions, says Sagan. The Indians thought the Spanish were just admiring the style of their dancing, uh, playing, and singing, and so continued with their celebration and songs. Then the the assault began. The first Spaniards start uh, like the first Spaniards to start fighting suddenly attacked those who were playing the music for the singers and dancers. They chopped off their heads, their hands, Slakia, and their heads so that they fell down dead. Then all the other Spaniards began to cut off heads, arms, and legs to disembowel the Indians. Some had their heads cut off. Others were cut in half. Others had their bellies split open immediately to fall dead. Others dragged their entrails along until they collapsed. Those who reached the exits were slain by the Spaniards guarding them. Others jumped over the wall of the country, the, uh, the, the uh, court, courtyard, while Yet others climbed up the temple, and still others, seeing no escape, threw themselves down among the slaughter and escaped by uh, feigning dead. So great was the bloodshed that 
rivulets of blood ran through the courtyard like water in a heavy rain. So great was the slime of blood and entrails in the courtyard, and so great was the stench that it was both terrifying and heart uh, trending, uh, heart rending. Now that they slack it, now that nearly all were fallen and dead, the Spaniards went searching for those who had climbed up the temple and those who had hidden among the dead, killing those they found alive. Okay, so this is speaking on, you know, the, the troops of robbers that came in and did the heinous acts they did upon our people. But also, too, this was also part of the judgment that our people would partake in because we were worshiping a God, you know what I'm saying, a false God. And it, and it described it in, this, in that particular page. I'm going to go into the breakdown of the tribe of Issachar. All right. Now, just for the record, Ze Zebulon or Zabalawan means exalted. And in, in that's dealing with the people of uh, Guatemala, to, uh, Guatemala to Panama. All right. All right. The Mayan Indians or the Mayans, the, the indigenous people of that, that region. The Issacharites or, or Yishakar or Issachar, the Issacharites. That's dealing with the so-called Mexicans and in, uh, in, uh, so-called Aztecs. With that said, let's go ahead and go into uh, dealing with Issachar. G Genesis 49 and 14. Issachar is a strong ass, couching down between two burdens. Okay. Now the word Issachar means he for hire. All right. And it says is a strong ass. A ass is speaking of a donkey. A donkey is a well-known animal. All right, is a no animal that's well known, I should say, for being for being stubborn, but being very hardworking. You know what I'm saying? And it's liking is the car at liking liking to an ass or like liking unto a donkey. And it says that he in this car means he for hire. All right. So with that said, let me keep reading. Couching down between two burdens. Okay, so it's a geographical location. Couching back down between two burdens. So where where is the car where the so-called Mexicans and the Aztecs are at? They're in Central America. North America and South America is, is right between Central America. So that's the ass that's couching down between two burdens. Dealing with is dealing with um dealing with Mexico, dealing with the so-called Mexicans who are the Issa Christ according to the Bible. Alright? With that said, let me keep reading. He saw that rest was good. Why? Because he's a, because Issachar is likened unto a hardworking animal like a donkey, and there he is he for hire. All right, Issachar is a strong. I mean, it's like in verse fifteen. He and he saw that rest was good. It said that he saw rest was good. When you deal with the siesta, siesta means rest. It's a very common uh, thing that's practiced amongst Hispanics. The indigenous uh, Latinos and Hispanics throughout Central and South America, but Mexico is the prime is the primary people you you uh, that are known for practicing the siesta. The twelfth was it the twelfth, uh, the noon of every of every day. They they would take a rest for a whole hour. That's what they practice, and that's one of their um, things they're known for. All right, primarily. And the land that it was in, and he saw that rest was good in the land that it was pleasant, and bowed his shoulder to bear, right? And he bowed his shoulder to bear, all right? Because when the Spaniards came to came to the New World, they enslaved the indigenous people, and and obviously the so-called Mexicans and Aztecs were no um, were no uh, stranger to that. Now, with that said. Let's keep reading. He bowed his shoulder to bear and became a servant to tribute. And he became a servant to tribute because the Spanish, the Spanish conquistadors came and conquered them and made them to dig up their own gold mines, and gold and silver mines, and became and gave them their wealth, gave them their, uh, and gave them, you know, what I'm saying they they made them work. All right, that's why it says he for hire. You know, what I'm saying that's that's an attribute that they have, and they made them work in their own. Uh, gold and silver mines and dig up their own their own treasures and give it and gave it to to the Spaniards all right let's go ahead and go into Deuteronomy the, the 33rd chapter 
or Slocky, not the 33rd chapter. Already went through all that. But, um, so that's dealing with Issa. That's, uh, that's the attribute of this card. We know that when we deal with the so-called Mexicans, you know what I'm saying, the Mexicans are always always getting jobs. They would go get jobs for $5 an hour, six to $7 an hour. Because in, in times we live in right now, that's what they're doing. Okay, and we can identify also with the tribe of Issachar, uh, the donkey. Okay, which is one of the one of the uh, sim which is the symbolic animal of that country. Dealing with uh, dealing with the symbol of and dealing with Mexico is symbol or the animal that's symbolic of the country. Dealing with the donkey, which is the ass that we that we just read in G Genesis the 49th chapter. You. It's the symbol of that country in many different ways, and obviously, and you see, and you see like um, some of our brothers down there that ride on, ride the uh, donkey that has the satchels on its side. You know what I'm saying? Because they're a hardworking, laborious animal, which is also an attribute of the uh, Issacharites down there, so-called Mexicans. And also, too, when you deal with when you deal with their deal with their uh, burrito. Which means little donkey, the Buddha. You know what I'm saying? So that's a symbolic animal that's down there. All right. Now I want to also go into something with this card real quick. To also prove who they are. All right, and one of the attributes that they'd have. First Chronicles 12 and 32. And of the tr children of Iscar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their commandment. So, Issachar were the pretty much the, were pretty much the ones that look up in the heavens and were astrologists, all right? They, were, they would go in and they would look, they would look through, look in the heavens to see which, what, what Israel ought to do at what particular time. They were pretty much the timekeepers in that sense. Now, when you deal with the, the name Aztec, when you break it down in the Paleo Hebrew, Oz, as mean as or Oz means uh, people, and Teka or Tech or Teka or in the Paleo Hebrew means uh, time. So it's people. So it would be translated people of the times. All right, so that proves that uh, the so-called Aztecs, all right, the Mexicans are the tribe of Issachar, because Issachar were the ones that were pretty much the timekeepers, the people that saw saw in the heavens what particular uh, season and time that we were in, and we would tell they would tell what Israel would do in what particular time. Okay, so. With that said, let's go ahead and prove them, prove who they are with a couple books. First book I want to use is uh, Lost Tribes of Promised Land by Ronald, Ronald Sanders. All right, I'm gonna go to page, so I'm gonna go to page 187 out of the book, Lost Tribes of Promised Land. But even if we set the question of his origins aside, Duran work, su work suggests that he viewed the Indian destiny from a perspective influenced by the new Christian experience of his time. Whether he was conscious of this or not, for this slacket, for with increasing frequency and conviction, Duran came to see elements of a Judaic character in the old Aztec religion. At first, this tendency appears only as a fervent search for Jewish analogies provoked by Aztec customs such as the eating of only unleavened bread for certain days of the year or the pro prohibition of drinking liquids after the eating of certain ritual foods and the use of baths for purification in time. This begins to seem to Duran like overwhelming evidence that the Indians are indeed descended from the lost tribes of Israel and he opens his Last and most important work, the history of the Indies of New Spain with a unqualified assertion to this effect. In this way, even certain fundamental legends can be explained, such as the one that Montezuma presented to Cortez. All right. So this. Actually, I'm going to keep reading. So right here is telling me that this that uh, Duran 
particular conquistador that came there, you know, um, had had the theory that they were that they were one of the twelve tri tribes of Israel. They were one of the lost tribes of Israel, and they had a Judaic character in the old Aztec religion. I'm gonna keep reading. As the one that Mont Montezuma presented to Cortes, to the depart departure of the great lord in, in, in antiquity now seems to Durant to be a memory of Moses. As for the abject condition of the Indian, it can now be account accounted for in the classic way. This is God's punishment once again wrought upon the Jewish people for their sins. So, this is, this is one um, piece of book that you can use to prove that the so-called Mexicans are Hebrew Israelites. I'm going to bring out another one. Origins of the American Indians by Lee E. Huddleston. All right, so I'm going to go to page 80. 80, yeah, I'm gonna go to page 86. Here, I'm gonna go to page 86, and I'm gonna go to, and then I'm gonna skip to page 88, okay? Because it's gonna say say similar things. All right. So with that said, let me go ahead and go into page 85. I should say, between 1607 and 1729, only one Spaniard, the author of the author of the Esago accepted the traditional version of the Ten Lost Tribes of Israel, a, very, a theory, a variant reading of the thesis advanced by Pedro Simon in 1627, uh, enjoyed as much popularity and more nor notoriety. Simon accepted part of, of the Ezra story and argued that Indians probably originated in Israel, but only from the tribe of Issachar. He based his, uh, his belief on the prophecy of Issachar's father, Jacob. Issachar is a strong ass couching down between the sheepfolds he saw that a resting place was good and the land was pleasant, so he bowed his shoulder to bear and became a slave at forced labor. So this is giving you a, a reference, somebody having the coming with the same theory, which is the correct theory that the uh, so-called Mexicans are the tribe of the tribe of Issachar. There is a significant difference between the modern version and the rendition by Simon and other who use the Issachar, Issachar story. According to Simon, Issachar had how they so entry terminals. So with that said, let me go ahead and skip to page 88. Okay, I'm gonna read down the last paragraph. The only other writer, the only other writer this author found who accepted the Issachar, Issachar variation of the Ten Lost Tribes theory was Belshazzar del Medina in his Cronica de la Santa Prova Provincia del San, de, San Diego del, del Mexico of 1682. Although Medina, 1682, follow 20, 223, that's a reference, thought the South Americans and the Yucatans were descendants of the Gentile uh, Etican, father uh, of Ophir. The Mexicans are originally of the ten tribes captured by Solomon Esser and of the family of Issachar, whom the Indians recognize as their special ancestor. So, through through archaeology and through facts, through scripture and through different documents and texts, this proves that the so-called uh, Mexicans are the, of the tribe of Issachar. Okay, the so-called Aztecs and Mexicans, Mexicans are the tribe of Issachar. As well as I proved that the so-called people of uh, Guatemala and Panama are the tribe of Zebulon. With that, I'll include this less, uh, conclude this lesson. Lord, uh, Lord willing, brothers and sisters, was edified in this video. Until next breakdown, I want to say Kwame Asherala, Kwame Zebulon, Kwame Issachar, and Kwame Asherala, Shalom.